In this lesson, I'm going to teach you about a useful, even indispensable tool for Newton's second law problems. That is, trying to find the acceleration of an object given its net force. This is the free body diagram, which helps us to inventory the forces acting on an object and to assess their sum, which is the net force. So what I'm hoping to get out of this is that you'll be able to create a force diagram, known as a free body diagram, that's consistent with the situation of an object. The idea here is to provide us with a visual and conceptual tool to inventory an object's forces and to check that our model is faithfully representing the situation that's at hand. The point of a free body diagram is to find the net force on an object from which we can find the acceleration. A free body diagram is so named because it looks at only one body, free of all the others. It's just that one body and the forces acting on that body. To draw a free body diagram, you show the object or just a schematic representation of it, and then you draw vector arrows representing the forces acting on it directed outward from the object. So it doesn't matter if you're pushing into the object, you would draw a vector arrow going away from the center of the object. It's important in a free body diagram to include every force that matters. Sometimes you can leave out canceling forces, but it's certainly not necessary to do so. Let's start with a very simple example. I have an anvil resting on a table. It's resting, so there is zero net force on the anvil. How many individual forces are acting on the anvil? Likewise, with the same anvil on the table, how many forces are acting on the table? Now that we've counted them, we can figure out exactly what the forces are. So what are the forces acting on the anvil? What are the individual forces acting on the table? Can we draw free body diagrams for the anvil and for the table? Let's go ahead and do that. First, the anvil. This doesn't look like an anvil, it's just a circle. That's fine. We're just representing here as its center of mass. There are two significant forces acting on it. One is its weight acting downward, exerted by the earth through its gravitational field, and the other is the normal force upward from the table, which keeps the anvil from falling down. The net force on the anvil is zero. The normal force from the table is exactly opposite in direction and equal in magnitude to the pull from the earth downward on the anvil. What about the table? Well, we can start off with just a circle to denote the table's center of mass. The forces acting on the table would be its weight. That's a force exerted by the earth pulling down on it. And then there's an additional force pushing down on the table, and that's the weight of the anvil. Or you could say this is the normal force from the anvil on the table. To counteract these, we have the normal force from the ground. So the normal force from the ground has to be greater in this situation than it would be if the anvil weren't on the table, because the normal force has to counteract both the weight of the table and the weight of the anvil. But once again, all of these forces have to add to zero if the table's not accelerating. Now for your practice, I encourage you to construct free body diagrams for these situations below. First, a rock falling to the surface of the moon. So this would be while it's falling, not after it's landed. Second, a crumpled wad of paper thrown horizontally. Now in this case, this is not going to be a typical trajectory. In this case, the paper is going to experience significant wind resistance. A passenger in a car that's braking. In other words, slowing down. So think about what forces are acting on the passenger from the car. We have the car's seat, we have the seat belt. Any of those parts of the car that the passenger is interacting with are fair game. How about a box sliding down a ramp and slowing down? So the ramp is going to be inclined. What sorts of forces is it going to be applying to the box and in what directions? What else besides the ramp itself might be applying forces to the box? A batted baseball. This would be after it's batted while it's in flight in air. This is going to bear some similarities to the rock falling to the surface of the moon and to the crumpled wad of paper, but this is a baseball. What similarities would it have to those two situations and what differences would it have? 